Well, hey everybody, welcome into this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. I'm Nathaniel Dodson, and today we're going to take a look at creating this flowing red dress effect that's on my screen. We're going to take, it, take a look at it in just a second. We're going to talk about how to create this entire effect. I'm going to show you the photos you need to shoot. It's actually pretty easy, but I'm going to walk you through it, show you how I, uh, how I did this. And then we're going to cover everything that needs to be done in Photoshop, the adjustment layers and masking and, and just everything to make this effect what it is. And before we get going, if you enjoy the video as it's processing along, make sure you slap a like on it and also leave a comment below. Let me know what you like about this effect or don't like about this effect. Do you have anything you can add to it? There's always really, really interesting comments that come out of these videos. I would love to know what you think about the video, what you enjoyed or didn't enjoy. And I'm always in there trying to comment back when and where I can as well. So I'll love to see it in the comment section. Without further ado, let's get this thing started. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. You can see we're just taking a look at the actual finished effect. Uh, the color treatment is all up to you. The main concept is getting this flowing dress effect uh, when this is not really the dress that she was wearing that day. And by the way, this is my wife pregnant with our first child. This was the dress that she was wearing that day. It was a very cheap uh, dress she found somewhere. I don't know. It came from China for all I know. But we took this and we turned it into something like this. And it just looks, I don't know, it looks a lot more expensive. It looks cooler. It looks fancier. And this tutorial, we're going to talk about how we did that. Now, a very simple setup here. Uh, we were outside. I had her stand up on this stone wall and just shot. There was one light. It was a big parabolic umbrella up over here, camera left. And that was it. Just one simple, single light. I'm going to jump over here to my finder. Uh, I'm going to show you here. I shot, not only did we shoot our, we, we, sort of the pose that we wanted to nail, which is this shot, uh, and you can see I stretched out the uh, the stone wall, kind of leveled things off, got rid of some piping, some things like that uh, to get us to our sort of starting plate here. But then we also went and shot a ton of photos like this, where she had the dress off and she was just sort of like waving it in the wind, and it's, it's taking forever to load here for some reason. Hey, there we go. And you can see she's just kind of flapping it in the wind. I did this a bunch of times. Uh, you can see here. I had her like fling it out to the side and the whole goal was just to create what would end up becoming in Photoshop parts of the dress still I have that parabolic umbrella up here all the camera settings are the same the the exterior light is changing and you're going to notice all these .xmp files here that's because all of the photos the the straight out of camera shot and these 10 sort of flowing dress movements that I've chosen I made sure that I applied the same camera raw treatment to all those photos so when I dragged them and started putting them together here in Photoshop they would all look the same now I've gone ahead you may have noticed here this folder I'm gonna collapse my swatches for a quick second I've created this folder here dress flowing parts because what I've done is I've just gone and just very roughly cut out each flowing part that I think we're going to use and I just numbered them one through ten just because I'm, I, I'm you know I don't know OCD about my organization or something um, but I named the wall one through ten and we'll be able to further refine these selections in this tutorial and kind of build our dress effect as we go and by the way I just selected all of those layers the hotkey command or control comma allows you to show and hide big groups of layers like that pretty cool select the layer group there and I'll just command comma to hide the entire layer group so what are we going to begin with well we're going to begin by creating a selection over her and just because it's going to be useful to have we're probably going to slap a um, an adjustment layer on this image first so I'm going to grab the quick selection tool and I'm just going to quickly paint a rough selection. Now the red dress is going to be picked up re with relative ease over the rather gray green background that we were dealing with that day. Uh, so we're going to come down here and there we go. And then I'm going to hold down alter option and I'm just going to try to paint away parts of the selection that I know I probably don't need. I'm just looking to get a, a pretty close to rough selection here or pretty close to, you know, complete selection here. We're going to take it into select the mask in a second and and do what we can in there and kind of clean up our selection. It really doesn't have to be a perfect selection by a long shot, uh, but you know, hey, the closer we get it, you know, why not? Uh, so let's go up to select, select and mask. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm going to throw some smart radius onto this and I'm just going to, I don't know, give it two or three pixels of smart radius. It's all going to depend on the size of your photo. It looks like we've gotten a pretty decent selection. I can take the brush tool if I need to and really zoom in and like get the heel of her foot here uh, that obviously is not quite uh, entirely selected. So I can just paint that in. I can clean up these little edges and things. Again, I don't need to be a thousand percent accurate, uh, but it can it can be helpful to be you know relatively accurate. Make my brush a little bit smaller there with the left bracket key on my keyboard. 
Make sure I paint over that little bit that's not being fully selected. Great. This is just, you know, kind of a labor of love. Up here around her hair, uh, we're going to try the frightening sort of refine edge brush, which uh, should work well, but sometimes it just does really nasty things. But again, because we don't need this to be a hyper uh, accurate selection, I think we'll be kind of A-OK. -okay. There we go. Not too bad, right? Not too bad. Uh, and then this this little scarf she's wearing, it's it's so translucent, I don't think it's going to even, um, we're not going to really bother to make a selection. We can change our view, by the way, and just say like, hey, let's look at the marching ants. All right, it's going to make, we're, we can see we're not missing any big areas. Um, you know, we can check it out on white, check it out on black, see if there's any uh, areas that really need to be cleaned up. Whoop, let me just zoom in, I just hit the Z key. Uh, here, maybe around her foot, I could take the brush and I'm going to make the brush tool a little bit bigger. I want to hold down my alter option key because I want to paint away. Just maybe round off some of these areas here. All right, something like so. Great. And the same thing here on the bottom of her foot. We'll just clean up, clean up a couple of areas. Again, I'm not going to spend all day working on the selection. You know, this is just kind of like sort of configure this as a sub tutorial within the tutorial on using select and mask. Uh, again, to the best of our ability, sometimes select and mask can give you some real headaches. Uh, when you're trying to use it and failing. All right, I'm going to paint that away. Cool. And then I'll just quickly run over the edges. Just make sure I'm not really missing anything glaring. Oh, I'm going to undo that. Commander Control Z. There we go. It's not it's not like a perfect selection edge, but I think it'll be I think it'll be close enough. And because we're not actually moving it, uh, like we're not picking her up and moving her anywhere, it really doesn't need to be perfect. Like I've said uh, a, a million times already. Uh, we're going to output this to just a regular old selection right here, uh, and we're going to hit OK. And the first thing I'm going to do with this selection is go select, and we're just going to save the selection. I don't even know if we're going to use it. I'm going to name it Melanie. Uh, I don't know if we're even going to use it, but it's just useful to have it. When you save a selection, there it is in our channels. Uh, looks like I already have a channel, which uh, was selected. I'll just drag that. Well, you know what? Actually, I'll just keep that one uh, because maybe it's, whoops, maybe it's a little bit more perfect. So that, that'll be the one that I use. Um, and you can see, there we go. It's, it's essentially the same thing. But anytime we now need to load this as a selection, we can just command or control click on that channel thumbnail. Command or control D to deselect. All right, let's go back to the layers. First thing that I want to do, uh, I'm actually going to go back to the channel. What am I thinking? I'm going to command or control click on that channel to load her as a selection. And I'm going to go select inverse. So it's going to flip the selection. So we're selecting everything except her. And I'm going to throw a, a curves adjustment layer onto this. And it's going to automatically create a mask, which is going to attack everything except her. Her. So you can see we're darkening the entire image except her. We don't really want to darken everything though. What we want to do is kind of enrich the landscape a little bit, maybe boost the satur or the saturation, the contrast a little bit by creating just a very subtle S curve. And then we'll come down here to the green channel. I think I'm going to pull down on the green channel a little bit, infuse a little bit more magenta into the shadows, and then I'm going to boost and just put the greens back to where they should belong for the highlights. Uh, and we could also come into the blues and maybe boost the blues and the shadows just, just a little bit. Again, we want to be careful. Uh, I'm going to make sure I pull this midline back back in accordance with the original line there by adding another anchor point and just dragging it into place. And then red, it, it could be nice. we got to kind of watch with the red, you know, bumping a little red into the background. Yeah, we'll give it a little kick. I just you know, threw a point in the middle and dragged it upward a little bit. So you can see there's before, there's after. So we're beginning to kind of add some magenta and red to the overall scene. And now that we've gotten this far... Um, we're going to begin actually starting to apply some of these flowing dress parts. Now, before we go ahead and apply these flowing dress parts, I want to let you guys know I'm selling a course over on touchfit.com. There should be a link that just appeared right up there. It's all about how to retouch photos. If you're enjoying this, you're going to love what I have to offer in the course. And if you pick up a copy of the course, you help support what we're doing here. Help me keep cranking out these videos. Help keep the channel growing. And we're going to get so much amazing content uh, coming out in the, in the coming months and years. And uh, it all starts with just, you know, lending a little support to the channel. If you do, that's great. If not, the advertisers still pay on the video. So, you know, the video is free and that's cool too. Let's get back to the tutorial. All right, so we're going to begin building out the flowing dress effect. I'm going to sort of try to mimic what I've already done here because this just kind of works. Uh, so let's open up a dress flowing parts. I'm going to select 10 through 2 by just shift, shift click the first layer, shift click the layer on the end, command, a comma, and I'm going to begin here with 1. So what I'm going to do is grab my move tool. That's a black arrow. Hot key is the letter V. And I can move this up here just so we can really get a look at what we're doing. And I think what we'll do here is go ahead and go select color range. We're going to use this to try to select this red dress here. So the idea is whatever I click is going to that that range of colors will be selected. Now obviously the red kind of sort of sticks out in the scene. So I can just click here and you can see the bulk of the dress will be selected. If I hold down shift, I can keep adding to the reds that will be selected. Let's make sure these shadowy areas will be selected. 
something like that is probably pretty close. We want to just take note, we are selecting obviously the original dress as well. Don't worry about that too much and we'll take care of that in just a second. And I'm just going to make sure I'm getting as much of the reds in the red dress as possible. And I can increase or decrease the fuzziness. You can see if I go too far, I'm going to get all kinds of atmospheric stuff. Don't want that. We just want uh, all of the pixels here in the red dress. Now we don't have to worry too much. A fuzziness of about 60 looks like it's going to work pretty well because check this out. We're going to hit OK. Of course, all this junk is being selected, but after all, we are working just on the O1 layer and those are all the pixels on the layer. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use our a rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to hold down Shift and Alt, Shift and Option on the Mac, and I'm going to drag a selection out over just the bits of selection I want to keep. So that's that stuff. Now, sadly, it looks like it is keeping part of her hand, so we're going to have to go in and erase some of this manually uh, in a little bit. But here's basically how I want to work this. I want to just invert the selection. The hotkey is Command Shift or Control Shift I. It's the same as that Select Inverse thing we did earlier with the mask. This is selecting everything except the red. And now what we're going to do is hit the Delete key. Boom. Delete. Maybe delete once more. Three times. Cool. Command or Control D to deselect. So now we have this just floating red dress. Now obviously you can see where she's grabbing a hold of it. No big deal. Uh, we can we can adjust that in a second. But if we move it down over the area of the image, which is going to be over, you can see the edges blend really, really nicely because the colors haven't really changed behind it. And at this point, if we wanted to add a mask, we could. Let's actually move it over her dress. And look at this. Look at this. This is a little embarrassing. Remember before I said we add the, the same exact exposure and contrast and color and everything to not only the portrait of the woman who we're shooting to put in this flowing dress, but also in all the little flappy flowy shots that we do as well. Something either happened, I'm not sure, maybe I made some adjustments after the fact and I'm just not remembering it here uh, because these are the actual photos from the, the finished product that you saw a moment ago. Either that happened or um, the lighting in the environment was just changing enough that it just affected the color a little bit. I'm thinking it's probably the camera raw settings got tweaked or adjusted. Let's spin this into something good. Let me show you how I would adjust this, given the fact that I have all the assets laid out. Really, you should go back to the camera raw files and just figure out what's wrong and adjust the color there. But let's adjust it here in Photoshop. Here's how I would handle this. So you can see it looks like it's a little bit orange, maybe not quite as saturated as the dress. The hue of the dress also is a little shifted. Well, that would be why the, this dress is a little too orange, right? Because this is more red and even more magenta if you look at the edges. So here's what we're going to do. Presumably, all of these pieces of dress are off because they all came from the same set of raw files. So it's pretty simple fix. Here. We're going to go Commander Control U, which is going to bring up hue saturation. This is destructive editing at its finest, but we're just hacking through it to, to fix this little issue. Uh, we're going to shift the hue first and foremost. I want to shift the hue slider to the left because that takes into the pink territory. Pink is obviously way too far though, so let's try something like negative uh, 5. Looks a little, a little better. It needs to be made a little bit darker. Let's maybe go negative 10, negative 20. Let's try that and then let's boost the saturation. Maybe plus 30. That actually looks pretty close, right? It looks pretty close. So a hue of negative 5 and saturation of plus 30, lightness factor of negative 20. Brings it close enough that I think it'll blend pretty seamlessly. Uh, that'll probably look pretty good. Let's go ahead and hit OK. Why am I not concerned about this? Well, because with these other layers, as I turn them on, I can use the hotkey, com remember command U would open hue saturation. Well, command option or command alt U will open hue saturation with your previous, your, your last or most previously used um, settings or array of options, whatever you want to call them, in that particular dialog box. So in this case, command option U or command alt U brings up hue saturation with all the settings we already figured out for the other dress. So it's going to be a snap to fix all the rest of the these layers. So as we get to those layers, we'll go through and just correct them all. But let's take a look at masking this into place. And I think before I mask this into place, I want to sort of make this uh, go flowing off out into the distance over here. So we're going to use liquify to adjust that. We do need to get rid of these couple handheld messy areas before we do that. So let's go ahead and convert this to a smart object by right clicking on it, choosing convert to smart object. This is just going to allow us to get back into liquify and adjust it later on down the road if we decide we really want to. I'm also going to throw a layer mask onto this layer and we're going to zoom in here. And the first thing I'm going to do is just get rid of the obviously distracting uh, bits of you know skin color. So I'm going to reduce the size of my brush quite uh, a bit. I'm painting with the color black, got my opacity set to 100%, and you can see I can just paint this right away. And because the color of the dress is going to just fade right into the existing dress, uh, just a soft edge brush going through, we can get rid of a lot of that stuff. I'm not going to do it perfectly at all right now because uh, we got some liquefaction that we need to go ahead and do before we worry about any of that stuff. You can see we just got rid of sort of the initial pressing stuff. In fact, after we do the liquefaction, we're probably going to need to adjust the mask again. So I probably should have done the liquefaction first. Here's how we liquefy. We go filter, liquefy. Easy peasy. 
Uh, and this one, this this piece of the dress, we're probably going to push this around a bit using the forward warp tool. Uh, I'm going to right, I'm not going to right click. I'm sorry, I can't do that in here. I'm going to use my left and right bracket keys. You can also just use your size slider up here. I just want to make this brush a little bit smaller. Uh, in fact, make it a little bit larger now that I started making it a little bit smaller. I'm going to pull this up. I don't want to show the backdrop. I just want to use this and just kind of work with it naturally. I'm going to pull the dress off this way. You want to be careful that you don't stretch it so much that it's like, whoa, you really stretched that dress, didn't you? We still do want it to look natural. But remember, a, a big chunk of this dress is also going to be covered up. Um, so it, it does not at all need to be perfect. Uh, we're just looking to give it a little bit more volume here as sort of our initial starter flowing piece. There we go. We're going to hit OK. And you're going to see there we are. And sure enough, I need to adjust the mask. Uh, that was just dumb slash not thinking ahead on my part. I'm going to zoom in with the mask now, grab my brush tool, and I'm going to paint away with black. I'm going to paint that away. I'm also going to try to just paint away some of that edgy edginess there. And then I can just sort of blend that right back into the dress right there. I'm using a tablet. Using a tablet's really helpful for that kind of thing. All right, now at this point, what you can start doing is actually blending it into the existing dress. Obviously, I want to well, make sure we're painting with the color black. Make sure you have the layer mask selected. All right, and what I what I want to do here is start painting away uh, kind of bits of the dress that don't really make sense. Um, now, this would be a, a totally 100% seamless match if we um, if we hadn't kind of messed up the color of our our dress. And in fact, this might be a good place to kind of go back in and tweak the um, tweak the hue a little well we really can't tweak the hue can we because it's a smart object we'll live with it um, you're gonna sort of see it but you can see how if the colors matching exactly that's gonna be a really really nice blend that you're not really gonna be able to see let's make sure there's nothing just showing here on the side of her dress and then we can go up here to number two uh, so here on number two we basically go through the same song and dance let's move it up here let's go ahead to select color range um, select this dress make sure we select a wide variety of color increase the fuzziness until we're starting to get background stuff hit OK we're going to use that uh, rectangular marquee tool. Go over that selection. You can, by the way, see how there's that's obviously going to be a problem. You can use the lasso tool and just hold down shift and add to the selection. Or uh, like up here, I can hold down alt and just remove a bunch of this fingery stuff from the selection. It can be just a nice, a really quick way to go in. And this, remember, most of these edges we're going to be masking and making them super soft anyway. So it could just save you a bunch of time to go in and just kind of rough cut areas like that that may need to be rough cut. And then use that hotkey command shift or control shift I to invert. And we're gonna delete all this stuff away. I'm delete one, two, maybe three times. Great. All right, so we have this little piece of the dress. It looks like there's a little something left behind there. So I'm gonna grab the eraser. You're never gonna see me do this much destructive editing pretty much on any other tutorial. I'm very much a, a big non-destructive editing guy, but to keep things simple here, we're going to uh, do this. So essentially, we need to begin and continue building out the dress because we want it to hang down beneath her feet. So that's we're going to use this piece to begin hanging down lower than the bottom of the existing dress to really, again, we're really looking to add that volume. Oh, you know what we need to do here is the hue saturation thing. So command option U, be control alt U on the PC. You can see we have those same exact settings. Great. Hit OK. We can probably convert this guy to a smart object as well. Right click and choose convert to smart object. Um, and by the way, when we do that, uh, we're doing that really for the liquefied layers. We're not going to be liquefying all of these layers of dress, um, but I'm probably still going to convert them all to smart objects because, uh, hey, nice to have options. So I'm thinking with this piece, we're going to hit Commander Control T and rotate it a little bit. Maybe kind of like that, have it coming out of the sort of the bottom middle of the dress, if you will. What I'm uh, specifically looking at here is the way that these wrinkled lines could maybe line up with this existing sort of wrinkled line and they could sort of fade together and become friends and disappear and look like it's maybe supposed to be like that. So let's commit that change, slap a mask on this, grab the brush tool once more, just go ahead and paint, paint, paint this away. See, like anything that's like an obvious, you know, these wrinkles don't just begin out of nowhere. They kind of do have to line up with something. Uh, but if you if you blend it all together well, it's going to be really difficult to pick up where the one dress begins and where kind of your fading and filling begins. And you can also reduce the opacity of the brush uh, if you find that that helps you get a really, really nice blend. So I can zoom back out. I can see, there we go. We just have that piece of the dress hanging off. And it's all, it, it's really a labor of love. You're going to just build it. I'm going to paint with white here. So my uh, brush opacity to 40 by hitting the number 4. And I'm just going to paint over that a little bit just to blend some of that in. It's not quite looking blended right. There we go. That's much better. Remember, a lot of this is going to be covered up by multiple layers of dress as well. So don't, you know, don't sweat it. Don't stress too much about this stuff. So let's look at part number three here of the dress. 
And I can zoom in once more. We're going to go through that whole song and dance. Select color range. Here we go. You can see color range is going to rem uh, remember your previously used settings. So if need be, you can always just adjust a little bit for each uh, selection. There we go. We selected that. I'm going to use the lasso tool here. I'm going to hold down Shift and Alt to be Shift and Option on the Mac. And I'm just going to come through here and select the bits I don't want since some of the uh, atmospheric stuff was selected. There we go. I can use my lasso and just get rid of that little, little bit of something there. And then also here where it's selecting parts of her hand. Voila. And again, using a tablet makes this so fast and so easy. And if, you know, if I'm rolling through this and, and I'm not recording and worrying about being, you know, maybe a little bit more precise, I could even fly through this uh, and just really, really rip away at this. All right, so let's Command Shift or Control Shift I to flip, uh, hit the delete or backspace key a few times, Command or Control D to deselect. All right, looking at that, it looks like there's a bit of a, a dark fringe around that, doesn't it? So let's Command or Control click on that layer to load it as a selection. There we go. And I'm going to go select, modify, contract. Let's contract this by like three pixels. And then we're going to have to flip this selection. So command or control I, and then just hit the delete key once more. So we're just trimming away kind of that troublesome area. Because we're probably going to use this little bit of dress like right in here and just fill out the bottom of uh, the main dress a little bit more and make it really look the way we want it to look. Obviously, we need this to be colorized correctly. So command, option, or control, alt, U it's for that hue saturation game. Hit OK. Right click. Let's convert this to a smart object. And we're going to drag this sucker over into place once it converts to a smart object. Alrighty, let's drag this down into place. Somewhere right around there looks good. And by the way, one of the things I'm seeing is, see how I'm like missing part of the dress here? Using color range, maybe, just maybe, we should be creating a mask right off the bat. That might be the, the more intelligent way to go. Maybe we'll do that with the remainder of these layers. I'm going to speed through some of these at some point, though, so you don't sit here and watch me do every single one of them. Uh, but here with this one, let's throw a layer mask on it, and let's go ahead and paint away. Paint away this troublesome area. Make sure the opacity of the brush is back to 100%. There we go. We'll paint away. Obviously, we don't need up there. And you can see how just like that just fades in so nicely. Uh, it just, you know, it, it just looks like it belongs, right? It just perfectly fades right into where I wanted it to go there. Yeah, that is a little a little annoying having a little see through area. So let's hear it with this next piece of the dress. Let's try this. Oh, here we got an interesting little kind of spinny, spinny action going on. Let's go select color range. It's going to have selected what we want, but we're actually going to kind of make a new selection here because. Uh, the last that last bit of dress was a little more extreme than we usually need. There we go. Fuzziness of about 55. Great. I'm going to use the lasso tool again. Shift Alt Shift Option on the Mac. Trace around this whole bit. Great. Zoom in. See like here on her legs that's selected. Really doesn't need to be selected. I can come right in like that and just get rid of all of that stuff that we don't need. Beautiful. And then over here for her hand. And remember, because most of this is just going to be masked anyway, the edge does not need to be a thousand percent perfect. What needs to be perfect is when we blend it into the dress itself. All right, so we have this little selection. Now, we don't need to even invert the selection if we're going to do it this way. All we need to do is hit the new mask icon. See that? Great. Hey, look, that looks great. Uh, and we will go to the original layer here. And we're going to do that command, uh, command option or control alt U trick to colorize it nicely. And see now if we have issues with the edge, we can just select the mask or we can control click the mask even. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to contract this selection as well. So let's go select, modify, contract. We'll contract, I don't think we need three. Let's go two. And then we're going to flip the selection, command shift or control shift I. And basically we have everything selected now except for this little bit of redness on the inside. Reason is we just really want to make sure our mask is going to be filled with black. Whoops. Make sure our mask is going to be filled with black to cover up this dark edge we see appearing. So we've got black as our foreground color. Use the hotkey option, delete, alt, backspace on the PC. It's going to fill that with uh, black and therefore get rid of that little dark edge. Great. So now we have this. And now any of these areas that are kind of see-through, we can just grab our brush tool, make it a little bit smaller using that uh, uh, left bracket key. Make sure our foreground color is set to white, and we can paint that stuff back in. So we can make sure that our dress, the parts of it that we want to see, the full volume of the dress will be there, or the, op the opaqueness of the dress, I should say, will in fact be there. So I'm going to grab my move tool, the hotkey for that is V. I'm going to drag this back over the dark area. It looks like it's all there. You know, there's no holes in the dress. So at this point, I'm going to convert this with the layer mask to a smart object by right clicking, choosing convert to smart object. This one, I think we are going to uh, liquefy a little. Well, maybe we won't even liquefy it. Let's just do command or control T. I'm going to, uh, I'm not really going to 
make it narrower, maybe make it a little wider. I'm going to rotate it like that, maybe even pull it out a little bit. Something, I'm thinking kind of like that. Yeah, I think we will use liquify a little bit uh, because part of what I want to do is kind of pinch the top part of this dress around. See this area sticking out here? We want to kind of pinch that over. So let's go filter, liquify, and I'm going to grab that forward warp tool and we're just going to kind of push this stuff over a little bit. And we'll try to make sure that it looks, you know, somewhat decent. Remember, most of this up here is going to get masked away and hidden, so I'm not concerned about that. I'm concerned about this bit that's going to be sticking out here. In fact, the, to get this edge a little bit more perfect, I can try out one of the newer Liquify brushes here, the, the smoothing tool, and I can just paint over the edge and just see if that will kind of smooth some of that out. Yeah, it does a nice little job there, kind of smoothing some of that right out. It'll give us more of a natural feel, natural flow uh, to that edge of the dress. Go ahead and hit OK. And obviously, because it's a smart object, we can always come back in and adjust it later on if need be. That looks pretty good. We're going to throw a layer mask on this, and this layer mask, remember, we have that other layer mask, but that's like bundled up into our smart object right now. So with this layer mask, this is sort of my blending layer mask. I'm going to make sure my foreground color is set to black, make my brush a little bit larger. It's a nice soft-edged brush. I'm going to paint away. I want to get rid of kind of most of this dark area uh, on this piece of dress. So what I may have to do is actually move the entire flap of dress up a little bit like this. Let's go back to our mask, make sure we're painting with black. Let's paint, paint, paint away to blend this together as best we can. Looks pretty good. Make sure that that's fully opaque there. All right, so that's not too bad. Yeah, I think we can work with that. We can work with that because we'll end up covering up uh, that. So I think you're starting to get the point, right? So you, you're bringing stuff in. You're isolating it from the background. I'm kind of digging the color range to layer mask and then grouping that into a smart object and then apply a liquify to that if needed and then use this layer mask here to actually blend the, the flowing dress piece to the bottom of the dress. I think that's a little bit more of an effective way to do this. We're just kind of rolling through it, having a little bit of fun with it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to speed this video up. Whoop, deselected Photoshop for a second. I'm going to speed this video up. I'm going to knock out 5 through 10 and I will be back in just a moment. All right, so we're back. You can see it's just there's just a lot of TLC where we're going through. We kind of want it to look like wrinkles are coming out of her hands, and I, I did sort of rush my way through it, so it's not quite as perfect. There's some stuff in here that I want to tweak and adjust, but for the for the purposes of this tutorial, I think it's going to serve a fine job of just giving us a little bit of an extended dress to play with. Um, so you can see there's before, there's after. The big key is just when you shoot the flowing dress photos, you really want them to be as close to being color matched with the original photo as possible. It's really going to help a ton. Um, so with that in mind, let's move along here and start uh, sort of adding some shadow and things like that. I'm going to select this curves adjustment layer here and we're going to add a solid black fill layer. So solid color. We're going to fill this bad boy with the color black. So you can see it kind of isolates just the new dress parts on a black uh, layer. You can see that's a little dark there. That might be signaling to us that this piece of the dress needs to be masked uh, and sort of extended a little bit. Maybe we can check that out. We're gonna just going to select the layer mask here. We're going to fill it with black. Foreground colors, black. So the hotkey is Option Delete on the Mac, Alt Backspace on the PC. Let's jump back into the dresses here. Uh, I'm using the Move tool. I'm going to hold down my Commander Control key, and I'm just going to click on that layer. And I can see that it's, it's that layer right there. So maybe if I extend it just a little bit with the layer mask, let me just see. Maybe there was just additional wrinkles or something there that I was aiming to get rid of. Yeah, it looks like there's some additional wrinkles there. So what I think I'll do is I will, I'm just going to get rid of, or I'm going to select the mask. I'm going to fill it with white. So there's a little troubleshooting here. Then we select the smart object, command or control T. Well, let's undo that. Select the actual object itself. All right, and it seems the Photoshop seems to be glitching out a little bit, but that, that actually is the, the little part. I'm not sure why, why it's doing that exactly. Uh, but let's go ahead and just make that whole bit a little bit larger, something like that, and maybe make it a little narrower. This is very strange working halfway across the document, but hey, at least I'm screen recording, so this can be witnessed by all. There we go, cool. And then I'm going to hit the little check icon to just commit the change, and then I would just remask this. So jump into the mask, grab the brush tool, make sure we're painting with the foreground color of black, make the brush a little bit larger, and paint away the stuff that doesn't really uh, belong. Something like that. Bring some of that back out and maybe hide some. It's just, I mean, it's just going back and forth so much on 
on what you want to keep, what needs to be get gotten rid of. Like those wrinkles very obviously do not belong up there. But if we get rid of them, it looks really, really bad. It may actually be less noticeable with those wrinkles there and maybe just softened up a little bit. If we set the brush opacity to like 50% and paint over them just like that, eh, it's still kind of kind of shoddy looking. All right. We're not gonna we're not gonna sit here and focus on that too too much. We're just gonna kinda let that roll as it is. Uh I'm going to collapse the dress flowing parts. That's a little bit of troubleshooting there, so you can see how I go in and just adjust to that stuff. Although your transform will probably work properly on your computer. At least I would hope so. Uh, so what we want to do here is we want to begin painting a big sort of shadow beneath uh, the dress down here. So I'm just going to do this manually. Again, I'm using my tablets. So that makes it a little bit easier. You could load every individual piece of the dress as a selection. Uh, that can be a little risky, though, depending on what you have masked away. So I'm going to select my layer mask here. Grab my brush tool. Set the opacity to 100%. There we go, 100%. And I'm painting with the foreground color set to white. And I'm just going to begin painting in uh, a bit of shadowy stuff down here. Now, don't worry if it's not 100% perfect. We're not necessarily concerned with that right now. Uh, what I do want to make sure, though, is that kind of, you know, the shadow needs to be constrained to sort of the stone area here in the foreground. We have the mask selected. We're going to go filter blur Gaussian blur and I'm gonna blur this relatively heftily let's try like 100 pixels uh, from the jump maybe a little bit more maybe like 175 yeah that's a little bit better go ahead and hit okay and then once more I'm gonna set my foreground color or make sure my foreground color is set to black I'm painting on the mask still and I just want to paint away any bits of the shadow that kind of extend beyond the top of this wall and go out over this little lake swamp bog area behind us and then we can try setting this to a blend mode of something like soft light um, if soft light isn't really working with your image just go ahead and just straight up reduce the opacity and here I'll reduce the opacity to about 90 percent or so uh, that looks pretty good and I think in order to make the dress sort of match the shadowness down there, we want to load this entire dress area as a selection. So here's where we will we'll check and see what we can do. So we're going to command or control click on this flowing dress. Whoop, I double clicked it accidentally. We want to command or control click on the dress just like we did there. And then command shift click on the dress thumbnail here for layer 02. It's going to add that to the selection and do it for each of the other flowing bit. Uh, bits of dress. There we go. So you can see we get a nice selection of just the flowy areas of the dress. Uh, if we wanted at this point, we could also save this as a selection uh, using like any of the selection tools. Just right click within the selection and choose save selection. And we can just call this dress uh, hyphen flowing. There, oh, I misspelled it anyway. All right, whatever. Uh, what I want to do here is now on top of the dress, I want to, uh, let's go with like a uh, a solid, or not a solid color layer, but we want to go with a gradient fill layer. I want to make sure my foreground color is set to black, though. So hit the letter D. There we go. Foreground set to black. Great. Hit the little half white, half black circle and choose gradient adjustment layer. And this is perfect. I want to make sure that I have the foreground to transparent uh, gradient selected. Of course, we just set our foreground color to black, so it's black to transparent. We're going at a 90 degree angle, which is going to place the black at the bottom and just fade it to nothingness up at the top. Great. We can hit OK with that. Um, and we can, again, try to set this to like soft light see what that looks like that's intensifying the color a little bit too much so maybe we'll just go normal and just reduce the opacity a little bit you can see we're just darkening up the foreground of our uh our flowing dress and really just making it look a bit more realistic now we can see that it is uh projecting this bit of shadow on her belly um as well as the top parts of the dress here because our selection after all is not perfect uh so a couple things that we can do uh we can just go into this mask here grab our brush tool and we're going to knock that stuff out. I'm painting with black, so it's going to paint that stuff away. All right. And I think at this point, just to make sure we don't accidentally select our bad mask again, we should probably grab that dress flowing uh, channel and just drag it and drop it in the garbage. Reason being, if we want to get the selection again, we can just command or control click right on our mask and get a, a decent little selection uh, right out of the gate. Uh, just like that. And it's relatively close. I mean, it's not as perfect as maybe we would like it to be, but I think it'll work for the purposes of our image here. Looks pretty good. And I think to really intensify just re maybe like the very, very bottom bits of the dress, let's let's load that mask as a selection right off the bat, and let's throw a curves adjustment layer into here. We'll increase, or we'll drag, uh, we'll, we'll place a little anchor point here and just drag it downward a little bit, and then place one up here and drag it upward a little bit. We're just straight up increasing 
contrast. Uh, but we do that by darkening the darks and brightening the brights. So therefore, some of our darks are going to be a little bit darker. It is going to help make the sat uh, the saturation of the dress look a little bit more, you know, rich and saturated. Um, but I'm not too concerned with that right now because we're going to select this mask. We're going to use our brush tool. I'm going to right click. I want a pretty big brush. Maybe not 3,000 pixels, but maybe like. Yeah, 500, 600 pixels, something like that. Let's go with 500. And I'm going to paint with black. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to paint away all of that curves adjustment that's affecting this kind of upper portion of the dress. And I'm going to paint it into kind of any areas of the dress that I can tell are definitely like, hey, that's a bottom side of the dress. That's kind of a bottom side of the dress. Uh, whoops, I should be painting with white there. Let's load that as a selection. Paint with white inside of there. And then maybe right up there as well. Uh, something like that. Commander Control D. Uh, and we can see here, if I alter option, click on the mask, you can see how much we've just changed the mask. Uh, so we're really just fading all that together. And maybe if I'm being a little bit more perfect, I'm going to load uh, that mask as a selection by command or control clicking on it. Flip it. So we're going to hit command shift or control shift I. We're flipping the selection, I'm sorry. And you can see we have all of this white out here. Technically, that shouldn't be there. Set my foreground color to black. And I'm just going to paint all that junk right away. There we go, Command or Control D to deselect, Alt or Option click on the mask. It's going to bring us back to what we've got. And you can see we're just intensifying the edges of the dress slash areas that definitely should have more depth. Like that little portion of the dress is technically, you know, in further. It's closer to the wall and, you know, it's in between kind of this flap of the dress flowing out toward us and the flap closer to the wall. So just things like that. The more you pay attention to that, the better end result you're going to have. Um, and obviously the more time you tweak it and play with it, as you may well expect, it's going to get better and better and better. And I think now what I want to do is kind of darken both of the edges of the dress. I think I can do this with a gradient as well. So let's command or control click the dress mask down here. Um, and what I want to try to do, let's try to use our set our foreground color to black. We're going to go with another foreground uh, to transparent gradient. And let's do this as a gradient layer. So gradient layer, foreground to transparent. The style, though, is going to be reflected. So you can see this puts a big black bar in the middle and transparency on both sides. If I reverse the gradient, it's going to give me black on both sides and transparency in the middle. And if I set the angle to like zero, you can see I'm getting darkness on both sides. And uh, that's kind of more like what I want. I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm just going to immediately reduce the opacity of this to like, I don't know, 20, 30 percent. Just again, darkening the edges. We're bringing all the attention in here toward the belly, toward her. Um, and the, the extremities of the dress are just kind of hanging out there in space. All right, cool. And what I want to do now is some dodging and burning. Now, you can do as much or as little dodging and burning as you like. I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer here. I'm going to call it dodge slash burn slash burn. If I can spell burn correctly, there we go. And I'm going to go edit, fill, and I'm going to choose to fill it with 50% gray. I'm going to set it to the soft light blend mode. So that's right there. Choose your blend modes, soft light blend mode. Hey, all the gray disappears. But check this out. If we use the dodge tool, actually, I'm going to begin with the burn tool because I like to burn in shadows first. If we begin, whoop, if we begin burning in uh, any areas we want to make darker, you can see here we've just made the side of her face a little bit darker. Uh, just by kind of running over it with the burn tool. So I'm probably going to speed this up a little bit. I'm just going to follow kind of shadows and highlights in the image and look to just increase the contrast. Uh, you can also use this method to help get rid of a little bit of body fat, get rid of wrinkles in clothing, all kinds of stuff like that. So, um, you know, it's all about just where you place shadows and highlights in your image. So I'm going to speed this up. I'll be back in just a second and we will continue on with this video. And when you're ready to paint in the highlights, you can just go and grab the dodge tool and use this and paint over any areas which you wish to accentuate in terms of uh, highlighting. Now, 50% exposure maybe is a little bit much for this image. So I'm going to drop it to about 30. Uh, let's try this again. Yeah, well, there we go. That's a little bit better. And I'll just increase the highlights here on the side of her face, on the front of the belly, of course, uh, the front of her body in general. We're just going to make sure we make those highlights all jump. Great. And then come through the dress here. We can just kind of clean this up, straighten it out. I'm not totally sold on the depth here at the bottom part of the dress, but I'm not going to fuss with it either because we are, uh, well, we don't have all day. I'll put it to you that way. We spent enough time on this. All right, here we go. Go through the hand. Great. 
going to make sure this highlight on the side of her face is really popping. There we go. And you can also go in just in the atmosphere and, you know, like intensify some of the reflections there on the top of the bushes, on the surface of the little swampy bog lake behind her, up in the clouds if you wanted, uh, all kinds of things. And you can see there's before, there's after. So we're just going in and it's it's sort of providing this mid-tone punchy um, jump, if you will. And that's generally what Dodge and Burn is going to do for you. And hey, just as another sort of mid-tutorial reminder, if you haven't signed up for the TutVid newsletter, make sure you go ahead and do that. I'll provide a link. It'll pop up in the corner of the video there. If you sign up for the newsletter, you get a free video guide all about 30 tips and tricks for working faster in Photoshop. Totally free, 100% free. You're going to love it. You get it just for signing up. So make sure you go ahead and do that. Let's jump back into this tutorial, though. All right, so... We want to darken the entire bottom of the scene all across down here. It's going to help build some depth, draw the eye into the foreground, or I'm sorry, not the foreground, but into sort of the middle ground of the scene and, and take some emphasis off of the wall here. This is going to be pretty easy. Again, with our foreground color set to black, it's as simple as going gradient layer, a linear gradient, black right up from the bottom, great. Uh, we can actually drag the gradient like this, right? And you can adjust the positioning of the gradient. So we could drag this down, say, yeah, that's probably about where I want the gradient to be. I can see before, I can see after, and if I need to reduce the opacity a little bit, I can always do that and really just dial the gradient in exactly where I'd like it. I think something else we'll do is we'll throw a levels adjustment layer in here and we will boost the darkness, the overall darkness of the scene. This is also going to give us a little bit of a contrast pop. Uh, and maybe I'll take the emphasis of this contrast and darkening off of the middle of the scene. So I'll grab like my brush tool here, make sure I'm painting with black and I can just come right into the middle here and I can just sort of paint away some of the, uh, some of the nonsense that's going on in there. And if it looks like it's too drastic of an edge, right? Alt or option, click on the mask. You can see maybe we could do, it would serve us some good to blur that a little bit. We can always go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and blur it, you know, like 550 pixels or something. Whoops, 550, something like that. It's going to blur the living daylights out of it. If you have an older version of Photoshop and that maxes out at like 200 pixels of blur, um, just apply that a few times. And then just Commander Control L, we're working on this layer mask now with levels. I'm going to boost the blacks a little bit here. You can see that's going to sort of make sure that we have a really dark center and just a nice faded edge uh, and then alt or option click to just get out of it. And you can see there's before, there's after. It sort of gives us a very subtle, very organic feeling uh, vignette, which is again going to draw the eye into the center of the scene. And at this point, we can begin thinking about some sharpening, some global sharpening specifically. Uh, so we're going to just use some high-pass sharpening. We're going to use the hotkey Command-Shift-Option or Control-Shift-Alt on Windows and the letter E. It's going to merge all of our visible layers to uh, one layer. And I'm going to convert this to black and white by hitting Command-Shift or Control-Shift-U. It's going to just suck all the color out of that. It gives us kind of a washed-out, crappy-looking black and white image. But I don't mind it. I'm going to duplicate this layer th uh, twice. So I'm going to hit Command or Control-J, Command or Control-J. Great. Hide the top two layers. I'm going to select this layer and I'm going to go filter other high pass. And with the high pass layer, I'm going to, I think I'm going to go like 1.5 pixels. Um, I'm going to move over here to her face. You can see we're just getting a little bit of sort of glow around the edges of these details in her hair. That's great. Hit OK. And what I can do at this point is set this to a blend mode of something like overlay. Uh, you could do overlay, you could do soft light. I'll reduce the opacity of it a little bit. Great. Let's go up to the next layer here. Uh, we'll go filter. Oh, we can go high pass. We can select it right here. But hold down the alt or option key when you do that. It's going to open the high pass dialog. We're going to bump this up a little bit to maybe like 2.5 for the second pass of high pass sharpening. Hit OK. This one we're going to set to a blend mode of soft light. Uh, so I'm going to name these layers. I'm going to name this one 1.5. I'm going to name this layer. Whoops, I opened up blending options. I think No, I didn't. I'm going to name this layer 2.5. Uh, and I could reduce the opacity of this a little bit. We're just blending multiple types of sharpening together to just bring out some of these sort of micro details. And then the last one, we're going to name this layer 15 because we're going to go up there to high pass. Hold down alt or option, select high pass. Uh, I'm going to give this 15 pixels of high pass. You can see this is doing a lot of uh, mess. Actually, maybe 10 will work better for this image. Eh, let's go to 12. Yeah, we're going to go 12. So we'll rename this layer 12 just so we remember what we used in terms of high pass sharpening. Um, or just the high pass filter, excuse me. And you can see it's this very chunky, very halo-y effect. So I'm going to set this to soft light. And this is just meant to be a bit of mid-tone punch. I'm going to reduce that opacity way down to like 40, 45. You can see it's just bringing out, intensifying the lights and shadows on her face. It's going to really play off of our dodging and burning and intensify all those shadows and brights a bit. 
You do want to watch for the halo-y stuff, um, but as long as you control the opacity, you should have no problems at all uh, with that. So let's now go throw a curves adjustment layer on this. We're ready to start basically doing the toning and just sort of finish color grading. And here's where we can just have fun with it. I'm going to kind of make this almost like an Instagrammy effect. So I'm going to boost the black point here on my curves uh, adjustment layer. Maybe I'll even reduce the white point a bit. This is going to kill off a bit of contrast as you're seeing. See, there's before, there's after. This is going to prepare us uh, to use a gradient map yeah let's go with a gradient map to color grade this a little bit and i'm going to double click the black point i'm going to choose like a very wine red so i'm going to go with like i don't know five one two one five d should be uh, a nice kind of wine ish color maybe it's more pink than wine we can hit okay uh and then over here we want like a nice creamy ish color so i'm going to stay bright with fff maybe ea uh well let's let's see i should do quad f f f f f E A. So four F's and an E and an A gives us this very like buttery yellow color. So we're going with like this magenta, you know, more grape than wine, I guess, all the way to this very creamy yellow. Hit OK. I kind of dig it. I'm going to hit soft light for my uh, for my blend mode. You can see just how much that transforms the color of the scene. The reason I reduce contrast with curves is because the gradient map when set to soft light, it really introduces a lot of contrast. So I kind of preemptively went in and reduced contrast. So I'd sort of maintain the same level. Level of tone. See how it doesn't look like the image has changed that much other than just color. That's because we reduce the contrast with curves. Uh, last but not least, maybe we'll slap some uh, some color balance on here. We could increase uh, magenta in the midtones and blue. Yeah, I kind of like yellow in the in the midtones there. Maybe some red. After all, there is some red there in the shadows. We could choose to go with green. You can see what direction that takes the photo. If I go magenta, it's going to take a little bit more of a whimsy uh, route. I'm going to do drop a couple drips of blue in there. Uh, do I want red? Do I want cyan? Probably cyan because red's going to make it too heavy. And then in the highlights, we can just throw some yellow in the highlights. Maybe throw a drip or two of green in the highlights. And maybe some red in the highlights as well to help make this a little creamier, a little bit more like that Lomography effect. And you can see, there we go. We've done a little bit of color grading and tonal adjustments to kind of blend the whole image together. And at this point, you can just go and add some finishing uh, grain. I have an action here that I like to use, just add noise. It basically just adds a couple layers of noise of varying size and varying opacities. Helps blend everything together. I'm just going to reduce the opacity on a couple of these bad boys. Uh, I got some tutorials on how to create noise and work with noise in Photoshop. Um, and you can check those out uh, if you're interested in, in learning how to do that. But you can see we've really taken this photo from, if I alter option click here, we, we began with this and we ended up here with this. So for working with flowy bits of dress, many of them and color range to select them and smart objects and filters and, and liquefying stuff and adjustment layers and selections and channels, dodging and burning and everything. Thing we covered in this tutorial. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.